It's very easy to get discouraged when you feel like your art is not really improving. But the truth is that it happens to the best of us. And it's a natural part of the learning process. But while it takes time, effort and dedication to get more skilled at your art, there might be other factors holding you back as well. In today's video, I'll be discussing some of the reasons why your art might not be improving and what exactly you can do about the situation. And as we talk about this subject, you can also watch me work on this new artwork that I'm creating. So without wasting any more time, let's do this. So first things first, are you practicing daily or do you draw once in a blue moon? Because one of the most important factors in improving your art is consistent practice. So the number one reason is lack of consistent practice. It's not enough to just draw or paint every once in a while and expect to see major improvements. You need to make a habit of practicing regularly, even if it's just for a few minutes a day. If you're not seeing improvement in your art, try challenging yourself with new subjects and techniques and create a regular practice schedule. There are many key reasons why consistent practice is extremely important. First, it helps build muscle memory. When you're drawing or painting, your muscles are constantly working to create the lines and shapes you want. With consistent practice, your muscles become more familiar with the movements and over time, the movements become more natural and fluid. It's pretty similar to how we learn to play a musical instrument. So when I was trying to learn how to play a guitar, I had to be super focused and constantly looking at my fingers to see if I'm putting my fingers on the right frets, just to make sure that I am hitting the notes properly. I could not do anything else while I was playing the guitar. I could not even sing. But as I practiced more, hitting the right combination to play a chord actually became muscle memory, so I did not have to think too much about it. Whenever I had to play an A minor chord, my hand automatically went to the right place is just to play that chord and once it becomes muscle memory you are able to sing as you play the chords it's pretty much the same with art by practicing consistently you develop muscle memory which helps you create more accurate and precise lines and shapes and creating the right shapes and the right lines comes naturally even when you feel like the brain is shut off consistent practice also helps you identify your weaknesses by drawing or painting regularly you start to notice patterns patterns in your art. You might notice that you struggle with perspective or struggle to draw certain body parts. And this could be a valuable thing. By identifying your weaknesses, you can start to work on improving them. And the more you practice, the more progress you'll make. It even helps you develop a style. When you practice regularly, you start to develop your own unique way of drawing or painting. You incorporate your own little tricks of drawing rocks or trees or even faces. And this seamlessly integrates into your art style. And that art style is what sets you apart from other artists and makes your art recognizable. But of course, developing a style takes time and consistent practice. You need to experiment with different techniques and subject matters and practice them until they become second nature. Nature. Over time, you'll develop a style that's uniquely your own. So yeah, it's very important to create a practice schedule and set aside time each day to practice your art, even if it's just for 15 or 20 minutes. It's still better than not practicing at all. Create small achievable goals for yourself. It's okay to start small and then gradually increase the amount of time you spend practicing. So the reason number two is not seeking feedback. You would never intentionally draw wrong perspective or wrong anatomy, right? It's quite possible that you are working on a cool action pose for a character and then you think it looks kick-ass, but its anatomy has huge, huge errors that are just invisible to your eye at that point. And that's where feedbacks come in. Seeking feedback from other artists, especially an expert or senior, is essential to help you identify your weaknesses and strengths and to get constructive criticism that can help you grow. I completely understand that it can be very scary sometimes to just put your art out there for others to critique, but it's important to remember that feedback is not a personal attack. Instead, it's just an opportunity to learn and improve. You can say that it's a necessary evil that you cannot and should not avoid. Now, where do I get some feedback on my art? 
Well, you can seek out online communities, join art groups, or go for a mentorship. The first reason why feedback is important is that it helps you identify what's wrong with your art and what are the areas that can be improved. When you're working on a piece of art, it's easy to lose sight of what's working and what's not. Proper feedbacks given from another senior artist can help you identify areas where you might be struggling, such as anatomy or perspective. Once you know your weaknesses, you can focus on improving them and taking your art to the next level. By the way, another great way to learn from other artists would be to apply for some internships. Maybe try working in an environment where you are surrounded by some other professional artists. You'll quickly pick up a thing or two and I'm sure that they'd be happy to help you with giving some feedback. This way you can learn new techniques and approaches to art that you may not have thought of before. You can also learn about mistakes that you may be making and how to correct them. But if you can't can't get yourself to work at a studio as an intern, don't worry. Just share your art with others on social media and get some feedback. Because if you are an artist, I'm sure that you're creating connections with other artists and art lovers on the internet. These people can be really helpful as well. So if you are involved with a great art community online, you can learn from each other, collaborate on projects and inspire each other to keep creating. It's important to get feedback from a variety of people, including other artists, art teachers and online communities. Each person will have unique perspective on your art and can offer valuable insights and critiques. While we are discussing the topic of feedback, it's important to mention that you should be open to criticism. Feedback isn't always easy to hear, especially if it's critical. But it's important to remember that feedback is not a reflection of you as a person. It's about your art that you have created and a constructive criticism only has good intentions to improve your art. Another thing that I've noticed is that when you give feedback to other fellow artists, that helps you improve as well. I think it's mainly because when something looks incorrect in an artwork, if you are able to identify it and then articulate that problem and communicate on how it can be improved, it's very likely that you are also able to fix that mistake and maybe not make similar mistakes in your artwork. So it can really help you develop your own critical eye. Besides that, it's also important to give back to the art community by offering feedback to other artists. Reason number three is not studying the fundamentals. Another common mistake that can hold you back in your art is not studying the fundamentals. It's easy to get caught up with the excitement of creating cool illustrations, but if you don't have a solid foundation in things like anatomy, value, color, and perspective, your art will suffer a lot. Now, internet is full of amazing content that you can learn from. You have free YouTube videos that you can watch and learn new stuff, but sometimes it's hard to decide where to begin and that's where courses come in so if you want to learn and improve a specific targeted area then you can find an online course that could help you improve in that area and preferably this course should be from an expert in the industry take the time to study and practice these basic skills and you'll see a major improvement in your art learning from courses help you build a strong foundation you develop a deeper understanding of how art works and you'll be able to create better artwork as a result. It's like building a house. If you don't have a strong foundation, everything else will crumble at some point. Learning consistently also helps you become a better problem solver. As an artist, you'll encounter many challenges when creating an artwork. Maybe a character's pose looks off and you're struggling to make a background look realistic. But if you're equipped with the right knowledge, you'll be able to overcome those challenges more easily. Now for the learning to be effective, it's better if you could take some online courses. And I have recently discovered a really cool platform for this exact purpose. It's called Coloso, which is also the kind sponsor for today's video. Coloso is an online platform that offers various digital art courses. One of the courses that I took was on concept art, which was taught by a very skilled and professional artist from Naughty Dog. It's the same company who made The Last of Us and Uncharted series. The course was not only informative, but also very engaging, covering a wide range of topics that include design problem solving, the importance of gathering visual references for drawing, the fusion of real world with fantasy in concept art, and the importance of efficiency and speed in the concept art industry. It also emphasized the balance between logic and imagination. I learned that concept art is 90% reality and only 10% sprinkling of imagination which makes it look real and believable. The course was also filled with nuggets of useful information just like this. Also, the course provided 
different techniques for drawing and coloring grayscale artwork, which was particularly helpful. It also shows how to see complex objects as simpler shapes and then use that information to suggest form when it comes to drawing figures or scenes. And it also introduced various tools that speed up the workflow, making the process of creating digital art less tedious and more enjoyable. As a result, I learned a lot from the course and was able to apply some of the techniques to my own work. If you are looking to improve your concept art or digital art skills, I highly recommend checking out Colosso for their high quality courses and very professional instructors who can help you develop your skills and take your art to the next level. They have classes on concept art, matte painting, photo bashing and even a lot of courses on 3D. And they have subtitles with all of the videos as well. So go check out Coloso using the link in the description. Alright, back to the video. Finally, one of the biggest reasons why your art might not be improving is fear of failure. Sometimes you get so comfortable with what you create as an artist that it gets really hard for you to leave that comfort zone and try something new. It's natural to feel nervous about trying new things or sharing your art with others, but if you let that fear control you, it can hold you back from re reaching your full potential. Failure is a natural part of the learning process. You're not going to get everything right on the first try, and that's okay. Instead of fearing failure, embrace it as an opportunity to learn and grow. So if you are consistently finding it super easy to create something, chances are that it's within your comfort zone. And chances are that your growth is pretty much stagnant at that point. But if you're continuously challenging yourself getting out of that comfort zone and trying something new, failing and then improving, you'll improve fast. Improvement takes time and effort, but with consistent practice, seeking feedback, studying the fundamentals and embracing failure, you can take your art to the next level. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and a comment for the algorithm. And if you're new to this channel, hi, welcome, and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.